Hey, welcome to Airflix. My name is Tony. Let's talk about color grading and how to avoid the mistakes most beginners do when they first start out. Being able to color grade your footage is a great way of setting yourself apart and making sure your footage looks as good as possible. If you have some very basic knowledge in place, you won't only be able to make your footage look way better, but it instantly has a much more professional vibe to it. A lot of people get confused about all the concepts and terminology in color grading. And I can totally relate to that. It has taken me many years working as a colorist to master concepts like color management, look development and shot matching. But you absolutely don't need to understand all of the advanced techniques or the fancy lingo to get a good start. And even though you might think that the color grading interface looks intimidating, you might at the same time feel like, hey, I just wanna jump in and start to work on all sorts of tools and see what happens. And maybe you wanna do that without a basic understanding of the fundamentals. But if you understand just a few basic things and know what not to do, you will instantly be able to make your footage stand out and look so much better. So first, let's take a look at the most common mistakes you should absolutely avoid. And I'll finish the video off with some basic tips to get you off to a great start. Make sure your footage is as good as possible from your first capture. Nail the exposure and do everything possible to have good lighting. And on the technical side, try to shoot a log if you have that option. That will give you the very best dynamic range possible, which can be important later. And of course, your white balance, your aperture and exposure can also play a big role in how good your footage can look. Since you rarely have the option to reshoot your footage, a good starting point is vital if you want great looking footage. Make sure to set up your color management correct before you start doing anything else. Color management is one of those things that might sound intimidating, but correct color management is an absolute must when starting any grade. So even just a basic understanding of how it's done is definitely something I encourage you to learn. Many beginners make the mistake of just jumping right into the color page and just start to grade one of their favorite clips because you just want to get in and make it look as good as possible, as quickly as possible. And maybe you spend a lot of time on this one clip and then you, they look at all the other clips and try to emulate that first grade to the rest of the timeline. But by then you might have painted yourself into a corner. But if you do have color management set up correct, you'll have the best possible starting point and you make it much easier for yourself to both color correct and color grade your footage. At the end of this video, I'll show you a simple way to get started on a project. And if you want to learn more, then check out the videos on my channel on color management and grading log footage. Many beginners start out doing way too many things, thinking complex adjustments and micro adjustments is, is, is good, but in reality, the opposite is true. All professional colorists starts with macro adjustments meaning you try to do as much as possible with as few tools as possible. And the reason is that overall adjustments translate much better to multiple clips and they can much easier be replicated, which will give you a better consistency between your clips. So as a beginner colorist, try to stick to painting with a broad pencil and don't fall into the trap of doing tons of micro adjustments on power windows or tweak small parts of an image or changing the color of small details. And talking about colors, don't use weird or strange colors. It's obviously okay to experiment and be creative, but there's just some basic perceptions that our brain expects when we look at things we all recognize. Things like skin tone or sky or landscape. So don't go kooky and add green to your highlights or magenta to your shadows. Try to stick to the natural perceptions like blue in the shadows or orange and yellow in the highlights. This works for a reason. And once you get a lot more experience, you'll have a better understanding of how you can push the look and the colors and still make it look pleasing. But as a beginner, keep it simple. Be careful with those sluts. But I don't know what you heard there, but what I'm trying to say is LUTs should be used wisely. Don't just slap a slut, don't just slap a LUT on it and call it a day. I'm not saying not to use LUTs. They can give you a great starting point to build a look, but 
Many LUTs are introducing heavy saturation and contrast and they need to be dialed back or at least tweaked to look good. I've seen many beginners that think that just adding a LUT can automatically make any footage look good, but creative LUTs are rarely a magic solution and I wouldn't encourage anyone to use creative LUTs without first having a good understanding of basic color correction. And I absolutely recommend to be critical about the offers you see online with 100 LUTs for 50 bucks. They're rarely professionally made and if a LUT is not specifically designed for the gamma and the color space you're working in, there's a big chance it will do more damage than good to your footage. So make sure to get professionally made LUTs designed for your specific material and use them correct. Color grading can very broadly be defined as a two-step process. Your primary and your secondary corrections. Primaries are your basic color corrections. This is typically where you will set your exposure, your contrast, your balance. And this step is vital for matching shots to each other later on, but also if you want to use a creative LUT. Your footage is most likely not shot 100% perfect, so you'll need to give yourself the best starting point before you add a LUT and start adding a look. So setting your exposure, contrast and balance is your first step. That will ensure if you decide to use a LUT, it will look as good as possible and that you give yourself the optimal starting point for your secondary corrections, which can be things like building a specific look, adding vignettes, using curves, grain, or finishing off with some halation or glow effects. But do yourself a favor and don't do the rookie mistake of skipping color correction in the first phase of your grade. Shots from the same scene or place should match. If they don't, well, you risk losing your viewer's attention to the story. The balance, exposure and contrast and saturation should look the same from clip to clip in the same scene. If you look at the same subject from two different angles and these primary things change a lot, well, then you're not in a good spot and you risk your viewers will perceive this as bad grading or even dislike your video. So this is where good color matching comes into play. A vital part of shot matching is being able to understand and use your scopes. Scopes don't lie. And using scopes, you don't have to depend on your monitor or your eyes. Your waveform scope is a great tool for comparing exposure. The vector scope is amazing to line up saturation levels. And the histogram and parade is very useful scopes to compare contrast with. You can find my video on how to learn all about scopes right here. So as promised, let me show you how to set up a project from scratch and a simple but solid workflow. So here I have a project with four different types of media or codecs. So you can see the codec under the thumbnail in the color page. If you don't see it, you can double click and it will switch between your file name, your version name and the codec. So you can see I have two raw clips and a DNX HR and a ProRes clip, all from different cameras. And as promised, let me show you how to set it up. So the first thing you do is go into your project settings and under color management, you want to select DaVinci YRGB color managed. This is basically you telling DaVinci Resolve, can you please take care of the color management for me? You're most likely going to work in SDR and your output will be Rec. 709 in most cases. So click save and after you do that, DaVinci will color manage everything for you. So you can see the two raw clips here, they look color managed and correct like Rec. 709, but you have a clip here that is shot and log and since it's DNX, DaVinci doesn't know which or can read the, the actual color space. So on the color page, you right click on the thumbnail. And by the way, if you don't see the thumbnails, you want to enable clips up here. And then you can right click on the thumbnail and you go into input color space and you want to switch it to the correct color space. Now, if you don't know what color space it is, you either have to ask the DP or the camera operator. And if you don't, if nobody can tell you what color space it's shot in, well, you're kind of on your own and have to grade from scratch, but do everything you can to find out which color space it's shot in. So this one is shot in Arri Lux C3, and you can see immediately it switched into Rec. 709. And the ProRes clip here again, also shot in Lux, so I'm gonna right click 
and this is DJI D-Log. And I'm gonna switch it over like this. So now you have everything set up in Rec 7 or 9 and you can start your color managing. Now let's take a look at the, the basic workflow here. So basically I'm gonna start with exposure. I'm just gonna label these notes, contrast, and then balancing. So these are my three primary notes of grades. So for the first one here, exposure, maybe set the waveform here. So let's say I'm gonna, I'm using my panel here, but I'm gonna bring the gain down a little bit so get a little more information in the sky. I'm gonna lift the shadows like so, and maybe bring a little more light on her skin and bring the gain down. So something like this, just a small tweak to the image. And for the contrast, well, I prefer to use gray uh, uh, curves. So normally I would find the mid gray point, but here I'm just gonna set a point by clicking on the, the curve and I'm gonna bring the shadows down just in the deep end, a little bit like so. And I'm gonna lift it up a little bit like so. Right click to remove a point. So not doing much. This is very well shot footage. So just adding a little bit of contrast like so. And for the balance, I'm gonna use my vector scope. And if you go to the settings, you can enable the skin tone indicator here, which will help guide you to see where the skin is. So if you click on the qualifier and hover over your skin, you can see maybe it's a little bit warm. I'm gonna bring it a little bit towards magenta and a little bit in, not much, a little bit like so. And I know this should be white. It looks like it should be white. So I'm gonna hover and see, yeah, maybe you wanna bring that a bit closer like so. So that's pretty good. That's a small adjustment like so. So now you've done your primary grades and now you should be 80, 90% of the way. So what you can do now is start tweaking the image and creating a look or doing more specific things with your secondaries. So I'm gonna add another note going to take that down here and I'm actually going to make a parallel note. So I'm going to click all P and I have a video about parallel notes that you can find on my channel right here. I'm going to use this to dodge and burn. So I'm going to bring, I want to bring this upper left hand corner here down a little bit. So I'm going to add a gradient like so. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to turn the highlight mode on. See, I just want to bring this down just a little bit. I'm gonna turn highlight off and window overlay off and then I'm gonna to go to offset and bring that down just a little bit, not much, just a little bit like so. Let me just label this gradient. Then I wanna work a little bit on the car. So I'm gonna label this car and I want to do a small window around the car so in this clip, this is a static shot, so I don't need to track it. Oh, let's see, let's say something like this. And I'm gonna soften it up quite a bit. I'm gonna turn the power window off. Let's see, uh, maybe add a little saturation and contrast to it. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Make it stand out just a little bit, like so. So, just a simple tweak. And after the parallel note here, I'm gonna add a new note. And this is maybe where you wanna do some kind of look adjustment. So I'm gonna to go to my curves again and I'm going to ungang my red, green, and blue channel. And I'm gonna set a point here and I'm gonna to go to my greens. And let's say I wanna add a little bit of green and blue to my shadows. So I'm gonna bring that up a little bit like so, not much like so, and let's say maybe add a little bit of red into my highlights. So I'm gonna bring the red up just a little bit and maybe add a little bit of green to my highlights. So tweak it a little bit. So if I go full screen and turn that note on and off, see it's not doing much, but it's adding a little bit of a look to the image. And then what you could uh, do in the, as a last note here, maybe sharpen it or add a glow effect. So I'm gonna go into effects and let's say I wanna add a soft light to find good threshold of where I wanna work in and control the spread a little bit like so. And maybe I just wanna bring it down, blend it down a little bit. So just adding a little bit of 
glow to the image like so. So if we go from the start, so we have the primaries where you set your exposure, your contrast, your balancing. And after that, your secondaries, I did some dodging and burning. I created a small look and added a little bit of glow in the end. So if we go full screen, so before and after, before and after. So just a simple little color grade here, but the basics is do your primaries and then do your secondaries and then you're off to a good start. So I hope you find this useful and that it will help you off in your color grading journey. Thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more useful tutorials and tips and smash that like button. It really helps getting the content out there. Thanks a lot and catch you on the next one.